2.54 capacitors. Uh, funny story. Um, I first learned about capacitors in my electrodynamics course, and for the longest time I had no idea they were actually useful. <laughs> so I thought they were just a theoretical construct to be used to like solve different problems. Anyway, um, the basic problem that, with capacitors is you have two shapes, and who knows what shapes they are? They're conductors. It, you know, the shape is kind of irrelevant at this point. One has a charge of plus Q, and the other has an equal and opposite charge of minus Q. And it says minus Q, okay? Now, the question that you have is um, the question that capacitors, uh, that kind of gives us capacitors is, is what happens, what's the potential difference between the plus and the minus? Okay, so that's between the plus and the minus. Well, that's gonna equal the potential at the plus minus the potential at the minus. Or, you know, just some integral from the minus to the plus of the E vector dot DL vector between them. Okay. What is the electric field? Uh, given the geometry of those shapes, I can't tell you. But I do know that the electric field is proportional, some constant K, times the charge on each of the objects. Um, now, if you double the charge on one of these things, then the electric field would double as well. But the question is, well, wouldn't the charges move around based on how strong of a charge they carry? And the answer is no, they don't because of the uniqueness theorem that we're gonna cover in chapter three. So you just don't, so just imagine when you double a charge or have a, have a charge on one of these objects that the charge density everywhere halves or doubles um, by, the con by the same factor. Okay, so the, the, the potential, it turns out, is also poten uh, proportional to the electric field. So that turns out that the potential is proportional to the charge on one of the, the positive plate. So we call this ratio, we call it C, is equal to how much charge you have on the positive plate over the potential between the two plates. And the value C, the capacitance, is only dependent on how those plates are configured. Nothing else matters. The units of C are the farads, F, uh, one farad is huge. Um, he says you need a forklift, but I'm, I'm pretty sure they've, they're smaller in size. You just need to have a strong back to lift and move uh, one farad capacitor. Um, normally they're measured in picofarads, which is you know 10 to the minus 12, or in uh, microfarads, which is 10 to the minus 9. So that's the actual farads you'd find on your, your um, various electronic components. Um, Notice that we're not counting for the charge here for this equation, we're not counting the total charge because the total charge always is going to be zero in this problem. We're counting only the charge on the positive plate. And um, sometimes you might hear of somebody, you know, taking some shape, putting uh, some charge on that, and then talking about the capacitance of that single object. And what they're really talking about is the capacitance of this object with the other object being a uh, infinite sphere with negative Q on it. Um, and in that case, you know, the the potential at that other end of the capacitor is zero, you know, uh, because it doesn't matter anymore. The electric field out there is just way too gone. And so you're just thinking about, you know, the shape of the potential of that with respect to the rest of the universe. So anyway, that's pretty much uh, a good coverage of capacitors. Hope you enjoyed what I saw.